Welcome to the Housing Hour with Kevin Ray, a locally produced program devoted to bringing you a fresh perspective on housing, diving into the issues that matter most. The Housing Hour with Kevin Ray is presented by Mortgage Investors Group. Now, Kevin Ray. Welcome into the Housing Hour. This is Kevin Ray, your host. I'm here with Mark Griffith, our executive producer and co-host. And we're so thankful that you came in to start your weekend with us. We're going to actually have a great show today. We have a great guest in with us. And this topic really could go into many different segments in, uh, in our series because it's all about how you get a job. We have an author in that wrote a book on just exactly that. And the name of the book is Cut the Crap, Get a Job. It is uh, Dana Manciagla. Could you pronounce it for us, actually? Absolutely. Dana Manciagli. Manciagli. That's yes. a beautiful name. And what, what origin is that? Because that's a very unique name. That is very Italian. Very Italian. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we love the, um, the book and we love what it stands for. For us, we know that, you know, to have a mortgage, you absolutely have to have a job, number one. But also, there's a lot of people out there that are searching. And, you know, the book really, the, the table of contents, I, I have not read the book yet. I know Mark has, and I'm going to read the book. But the, the, the gist of it, and I, I watched all of your videos on your YouTube channel, you're giving people direction. First of all, thanks for coming in. Thank you. My pleasure. And talk a little bit about the book. Just give us kind of a bird's eye view of what this book is all about. Yeah, let's start with what is crap, because that is quite a jolting name up there with the biggest <laughs> loser. And the crap are two things that really sabotage everybody's efforts out there after 30 years of hiring and job searching myself. And crap is mistakes and excuses. So I address all those in the books, segment by segment, and then deliver a brand new process that anybody can follow. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a that's a perfect description of it. And the book, really, it's not, you know, a coffee table book. It's not like a thousand chapters. It You, you really are able to, because I did read some of the beginning, so I know how your writing style is. It's very to the point and exact. And in the back of each chapter, I think, uh, Dana, which is absolutely fascinating to me, you give solutions, a little little blurb on solutions, tricks. You break it down to mistakes, excuses, and then you give a homework ex- assignment to everyone. So it, it's it's very usable. The, the uh, chapters are not long and laborious. They're very specific and direct, and I think it's excellent. Even more, everybody who has a book has the homework assignment but has nine free downloads that come with the book. Boom. The URL is in the book. And you bring down templates for the new cover letter, for a new way to apply, for a job search tracker, an Excel spreadsheet. So everything I'm recommending, I also built and delivered. So it's the best value for millions of people to work on a brand new job search process. What what has changed? And and let's talk a little bit about, you know, the job search, because I think we all can safely say that at one point or another, we've been in that search. And for some of us, I think when we got out of college, there was this, I guess, maybe legend out there that, hey, you just you just put in your resume and, you know, you pack it full of all of the um, volunteer stuff that you've done, the internships that you've done, you know, and then you just wait for people to call you. Well, that has obviously changed. You have to network. I love your um, your your little video yeah, about video. you know a little about the networking part because you have a network. Don't give me the excuse that you don't have a network. Your sphere of influence is your network. So talk a little bit about what has changed. And that's right. And I, I really wish I had that Men in Black Neuralizer for all of your listeners right huh. now. We have them on our website. <laughs> you have any <laughs> over there that we can push through the radio? Because if I could erase all of those myths. Even I, I was, you know, 30 years ago, what, when I job searched out of graduate school, it's completely different. And there are three major changes that have taken place, and they're, mm. they're still accelerating. But even during the last five years, first, technology. So the hiring managers are using technology. They're scanning your resume. The technical term is an application tracking system or applicant tracking system, ATS. And that is that's using technology on the other side. So throughout my book, I share all the tips and secrets of being a hiring manager for companies like Microsoft, Kodak, 
IBM and, and share what's going on on the other side of the curtain. So technology is huge, including social media. Mm, yeah. So the second biggest change is the need to use LinkedIn to be present, to be able to be found uh, on LinkedIn. So having a great profile is, is a whole social media chapter is what I spend a lot of time on. And those are two big ones. And the yeah. third one is the networking. Most jobs today are are one. I, I use the, the verb one because it's so competitive out there. To win a job, you must connect with people, phone to phone, face to face, not just with social media. Do you think employers are hiring the most qualified person? No, I think the entire process is broken, and here's why. The employers are putting out what's called a job description. It's their spec, Mm -hmm. and what they're getting, so they they write up a typical spec, has your skills, the experiences needed, all that. What do they receive? They receive a chronological barf of someone's background. Right. Literally, it's just, and it makes no sense. This business process is broken. So I encourage readers to deliver to that hiring manager why you're the best candidate for them. And I get, <clears throat> I script everybody as to how to do that. And one of the things that you mentioned in the introduction, uh, Dana, that I thought was really important, you you uh, listed three things you need to do or understand before you began. And you touched on the second one, which is technology computers, but an understanding of the kind of job that you're searching for. You've got to drill down that goal, don't you? Yes. If I asked nine out of 10 listeners right now, what are you looking for? They would stumble and it would range from well, I'm flexible. I can do virtually anything, which is really a bad answer. Yeah. And um, Or they would say, well, I want to leverage my skills in blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about that. We don't care to hear your resume. You right. need a specific and clear goal. And that's, again, why I have an entire section on goal setting, giving examples of a good goal. And I'll close with here's a good goal. I'm looking for a sales position in Cincinnati for a manufacturing company. I'm looking for a chemical engineering role in a technical company in Tennessee. That's that's the kind of crisp, direct, clear job goal that everybody needs to be walking around with. If you were to put kind of a percentage of importance on the different aspects of that interview process, because the interview process is no longer you meeting with someone and them delivering questions and you delivering answers. It really goes farther and stretches farther from that, which is people investigating you through all kinds of channels, whether it be social media or other things. Um, But if you were to put a percentage on it, because everybody gets so worked up about the actual interview, because it's almost like they expect something from the candidate. And if you don't deliver on what they expect, then you may not get the job. But is that is that as important as it used to be or not? Yes, the interview is very important. But the number one frustration today with our listeners is they can't get those interviews. So getting to interview, that's your number one metric. If you're measuring any activity that you're doing or any result, it's how many interviews are you getting. So I spend a lot of time pre-interview on the application, the follow-up, the networking, because winning those interviews is really hard. Now, once you're at the interview, I give all the prep tools, the most commonly asked interview questions. Yes, the candidate needs to prepare so much more today. And it starts with the phone interview today. That's another change in this, this era of job search. Companies don't want to waste money you know, taking people's time and bringing you into the office with a big suit and tie. No. They're doing phone screens, and there's an art to that. There's a science to that, to do a great phone interview before the face-to-face. And a lot of people flub those. Mm. And, Dana, I I, uh, I do a lot of hiring in my position as manager, and a lot of times I use email. And so when I target a, 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 a resume that I think that might be hot, I'll send out an email and ask them, are you interested in this location, these hours, that type of thing. I do, too. I love that. I recommend, I have a whole series of recommendations for hiring managers. You can send them an email. You can send them a a table to fill out on the left side. Hey, here's what I'm looking for. Candidates, fill out the right. And you get to see their writing samples. And if they even reply at all, if there are typos, grammatical errors, which still abound, 
and mm. all of that is great. I do recommend more hiring managers do some writing samples because that's their best day, and that's how they'll write on the job. Uh, could talk about Chapter 2 because all of this is the odds in this game that you call it. What do you mean when you commit to the odds of the game? What are you telling folks? Well, I, I, the odds game is that you literally need to rat, play a numbers game and get up the volume. Too many people search for that one job or they want one job in one company. They see it online, they apply, and they wait. And they don't, my, my, my favorite, least favorite four letter word is W A I T. And then serial process, they, that one's not going to happen, so they start another. You need 10 active jobs at one time. That wow. you're, they're real, you've applied for them, they're in motion. And keep it at 10 because you're not going to get interviews with 10 companies. But some people so say, I can't handle game. that many. I, that's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, you know, things in the hopper. No, well, you're not doing anything most of the time. This is the this is the myth. Is and that's where the the tracking sheet. You have one spreadsheet that shows all ten, and you wait. You sent in an application. You need to wait seven days before even following up on that. And so you can't do every something every day. It's not like your phone is ringing off the hook. So that's the myth of I right, can't right. manage it. That's an excuse. You need to. It's your number one job right now is getting a job. I want to tell everybody out there that's listening, you can get this book on Amazon, amazon amazon.com. It's Cut the Crap, Get a Job. And you actually, if you're a Prime customer, you you also can get free shipping, I believe. And we have a link on our website, and you can Mm -hmm. go right to uh, Dana's website and Mm -hmm. order it. And you can also get the Kindle version as well, for those of you. Now, um, you're talking, you and Mark were talking about hiring managers. And I want to step back into the social media aspect of what the hiring manager is doing. I don't know, Mark, if you do this or not, but I know that when we have hired absolutely 100% of the time, um, the first thing I'm doing is going to Facebook. Um, Absolutely. Because you can tell so much now. So I'm asking you, I'm wearing both, I'm wearing both hats here, Dana, explain to me, because if you are a potential employee and you really got to be care. You have to be careful, first of all, with your privacy settings on your social media. Mm -hmm. So I'm wearing both hats. Now for me as a hiring manager, I hope they have all access open so that I can see in every closet and find out something that is potentially going to be damaging to me and my company. Cause I don't want to waste time, money, effort, training on someone who come to find out has something in their life that doesn't allow us to coexist. Mm-hmm. So speak to that aspect of it. Let's start with the volume of candidates that every hiring manager gets. That's also accelerated. Mm-hmm. The average is 250. So hiring managers are looking for reasons not to hire. Mm, yeah. Again, managers are looking for reasons to put yes and no pile. Forget the maybe pile. There's either a yes or a no. Facebook is a great place to go for hiring managers, and they do go there. To so everybody remove those party pictures. You know, <laughs> exactly. Get, get rid, and and <laughs> some friends who are not behaving well on mm, Facebook because absolutely. that's the way that companies get into your Facebook is through some of your friends to yep. see what they're saying. Because you may be so, in a picture of a friend and yes. yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so you can, you can change all your settings. You can untag yourself from party p- pictures. That's Facebook. Now LinkedIn is a great way to help you get hired. So if a hiring manager goes to LinkedIn and sees a great profile, very mm-hmm. professional, learns more, reads recommendations, and sees that you've done a really good job there, that's a positive experience. Right. <laughs> the Facebook party pictures from 1998, <laughs> yeah, not however, <laughs> are not, or whatever year. Are not. And I don't not think Facebook was pictures, around then. also what you're saying. So be yes. careful on anything political, you know, the traditional, the political, yeah. religious, gender-based, anything that can really irk somebody, you know, remove all that. And tw- tw- tweets as well. Yeah. You're really taking a hard stance on something that could be a risk for a company. Yeah, because I think that the reason that it's so important is because in 2007, Facebook really um, uh, took over, really, you know, the Internet. And, and so, you know, if you're really, really conscious of who you're talking to and, and what you're saying, you have to be because people are going to make a judgment on you no matter what. Well, we will be back in a moment after these messages. We're going to continue on here with our conversation about getting a job. We'll be right back on the Housing Hour.
Hi, I'm Sue Benson, owner of Title Associates. In today's real estate market, it is more important than ever to have a title company with experience, a company you can trust, and one that conducts business with you in mind. If you're buying, selling, or refinancing, our staff promises to make your closing a pleasant one. If you're a real estate agent looking for excellent customer service, give us a call, 777-1040, or visit our website at tanox.com. It's football time in Tennessee, and if you want to make your house the envy of all your football buddies, come see us at Acme Block and Brick. I'm Brantley Rivers, and with a brand new outdoor kitchen from Acme Block and Brick, your home game day will never be the same. Acme Block and Brick. Our experienced staff can help you from the design stage all the way to the completion of the project. Acme Block and Brick has a wide variety of high-quality brick and stone products, including our Bell Guard pavers that will match anyone's style and taste. Acme Block and Brick. Come visit us at Acme Block and Brick and let our helpful, friendly staff show you how it's done. Visit one of Acme Block and Brick's three locations in Crossville, Kingston, and Alcoa. Or you can find us online at acmeblockandbrick.com to see how we can transform your game day brick by brick. See what a little stone can do. Acme Block and Brick. Hey, I'm Kevin Ray, the host of The Housing Hour. Please join me and my co-host, Mark Griffith, every Saturday from 8 to 9 a.m. as we bring you the latest news and current issues regarding the housing market. Also, check out our website, thehousinghour.com, for a treasure trove of information. So join us each week and keep up with the why and why not of mortgage lending. The Housing Hour is brought to you by Mortgage Investors Group. The Housing Hour, Saturdays from 8 to 9 a.m. on News Talk 98.7. Are you in the market to purchase a new home? Many first-time home buyers and veterans qualify for 2 or 4% down payment grants from the Tennessee Housing Development Agency. THDA offers 30-year fixed-rate mortgages insured by FHA, VA, USDA, or conventional loans. For more information, please visit our website at www.thda.org. Don't pay don't find no go rhino shield never paint your house again rhino shield hey. Never paint your home again. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Jeff and Roxanne here. As owners of Rhino Shield, our commitment to you is that you'll never have to paint your home again. Guaranteed. Rhino Shield goes on like paint, looks like paint, but unlike paint, Rhino Shield will last 25 years and we back it with a written warranty. And oh yeah, guys, Rhino Shield comes in your favorite color, the one your wife wants. We have been servicing the Chattanooga area for over a decade, and now it's time to bring Rhino Shield to Knoxville. So call now and get our introductory offer of 25 5% off. 865 219 That's 865 219 Or visit us online at rhinoshieldtn.com. That's rhinoshieldtn.com. Don't pay, don't rhino. Go Rhino Shield. Never paint your house again. Rhino Shield. Rhino Shield. It's not paint. Home ownership matters, and Mortgage Investors Group wants to help you with all your home financing needs. Whether it's a purchase or a refinance, our federally licensed loan officers are ready to help you sort through all the mortgage loan options. So call us today, 800-489-8910, or visit us online at mortgageinvestorsgroup.com. Mortgage Investors Group, your home loan solution for the past 23 years. Tennessee Mortgage License Number 109111. This is how it's a work the deal weekend. Congressman Chuck Fleischman, Monday at 8.05. We'll see if they get a deal. We put the braces of truth on the crooked teeth of talk, Monday at 5.30. The Halloran Hilton Hill Morning Show, News Talk 98.7, WOKI. The Housing Hour with Kevin Ray continues, helping you understand what is really going on out there and what to do about it. Again, Kevin Ray. Look in my We're back here on the Housing Hour, and we are so excited about our show today because there are a lot of people that are out there that are really in need of a job. And, and, you know, the tools may or may not be there. You know, it's one of those things where you have to search. If you want to find out something, if you want to learn how to do something, you have to actually put action um, into those steps. It's not just going to come through osmosis. So the book that was written was really kind of a very conservative title. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the crap, get a job. Dana Mag- Monsiagli, um is the author, and you can find that 
certainly on Amazon.com. And if you are a, a Prime um, member, which I am, great set of things you yes. get as a Prime member. Um, you can get free shipping and some other things. So we're continuing in on our conversation. And Mark, why don't you line up what we want to kind of talk about here in the next uh, little bit? Well, she, she set the stage for everything perfectly. And the book is so well organized. So I just want to follow through because the second part is preparing to win a job because I don't think many people, especially the ones that I've interviewed, have taken any time to prepare when they come to talk to me. So let's start. I agree. St- yeah. So start off. What's the conversation here? What's your your flow of ideas? Uh, share that information with us. Well, the the bottom line is it's deplorable. So everyone <laughs> yeah. wake up and it's ready, aim, fire. We're in the aim. Exactly. And instead, people are walking in. They haven't even read the job description. So we want everyone to pause, inhale, and get prepared. Did you know you could prepare for an interview now before you even have one? Since 80% of the questions are going to be the same, you can script yourself with the answers. That's one example. And that's a good one because a lot of people, I, I'm telling you, when I get, I'll get hit with 200 uh, resumes and they'll be from all over the country. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I'm hiring in at a lower level, why would somebody in Seattle, Washington want to hire in in Knoxville, Tennessee at a lower level than what they're making? Do people not? It's the shotgun approach. That's what they're doing. And they're not getting advice from Dana, for sure, because we would get the only most highly qualified people if we followed the same approach. And that's exactly why this book has got to be a prerequisite if you're in the. and, And what's the age group for this book? This is college to senior executive, works for everybody, Everyone. college grads, MBAs, all the way through senior execs. And what you described was what, what I coined random acts of application, RAA, mm-hmm. that people are just <laughs> ran, because they don't have a goal, go see number one, rule number one, and chapter number one. They don't have a goal, but it shows to the hiring manager that you're just a random applicant. Instead, prepare for the application and the conversation that you hope to have by reading the job description and start over, rewrite your entire cover letter that's all about the hiring manager. It should be more you, you need this, I have that in response instead of the old I, 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 me, 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 aren't I great, and hire me. And you've got this job tracking tool that you've created? Yes. So talk Everybody about that. Everybody needs to be organized. That's part of preparing is sit down at your desk or wherever you're going to do your job search. It can be the library. And are your tools ready? It could be a notebook and paper. This doesn't have to be technology. But most people have access to a PC, have Microsoft Office. So I did the Excel tracker for you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's good because that helps to keep people organized. And, and if you are one of those people that are doing the shotgun approach, whether it be Monster or the other ones that are out there, um, you can get so diluted. And, you know, pick 10, like you said, right? I mean, that's yeah. really one of the key things. So go ahead, Mark. You were going to. Well, I was going to say, because as a manager, I'm confused about where to publish my ad. So, and you wrote in chapter six, sources for jobs, online, offline. What's the best source to look and where's the best source for managers to post? Great. Well, the, the best Good source question. to, what I, in, in the preparation phase, just to understand the landscape, the best place, I call it shopping. Before you're even going to apply, the best place to shop of to jobs that are available is on monster or indeed.com especially if you're not sure quite how to state your goal, then go to the big, big job boards. And those are just monster indeed. I list all kinds on my, and I keep it maintained on a resources page on my website. And there are part-time websites. There's all kinds of special websites. Now, where a hiring manager should post, is the local business journal as well. Everyone, you have all these, you have the Nashville, of course, you have Tennessee, you have local business journals, and that's where candidates go, and that's what candidates should be reading. Learn about people on the move, get the book of lists, learn about the companies that are moving and shaking, and that's where you'll find jobs. Now, one of the things that people, so, you know, once they actually get the the goal and they have the plan, then they go out there and they, they really, really do up a, a good amount of research and, and obviously recommend people to research the company that you really want to go after. And that's my thing is that 
if you really want a job that is going to be long lasting and you're going to be able to pour your heart and soul into it and it's something you're passionate about. Um, I think for me, I don't know necessarily that you speak to this, but I think it's important for people to think about. And that is, you know, if you're going to do something and you're going to be a successful employee, you know, maybe if you absolutely cannot stand pets, don't go, don't go apply at PetSmart, you know? So do you have any thoughts on that? I do. I mean, it's, it's twofold. It's not only believe in what the company is doing, but don't be too picky. I mean, I agree. Like I'll never work for a cigarette company. That's me, <laughs> right. but, but don't be too picky on the industry of the company. I always, always default to first, what kind of job do you want to be doing eight to five? If it's a marketing job, then does it really matter if you're marketing labels to toilet paper, to, um, to business, to widgets of a manufacturing company. Mm, so love that's true. what you, the task you want to do eight to five. Secondly, look into the culture of the company beyond just what they do. And a great site to go to is glassdoor.com. But again, I have it under my resources tab. Mm, okay. And Glassdoor is a very cool site because employees actually, it's like the Yelp of job search where hmm. employees are giving, exa- giving input of how the company's culture is, how much they pay. Wow. They're giving salary information. It's a great resource. To that do could be a double edged sword research. for hiring people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've yeah. got it. And, and there's something in your book, Dana, that I, I thought was very fascinating. And it's in the networking for jobs and in that chapter. Because uh, what happens to most people when they lose a position, uh, whatever it is, they tend to fall off the face of the earth. They really do. They just, they go into a shell. They don't come out of the house. Maybe they're feeling bad about this and it's depressed or whatever. In your book, you say face-to-face networking, get involved in volunteering and charity work because this is where you get the jobs and your, your name out. Talk a little bit about what type of networking people should be doing. Well, first, I hope everybody today, if you, especially if you are employed, you're networking aggressively anyway, not waiting until you're out of work. Now, if you're currently out of work, you want to fill that gap. The number one question you're going to get is, what have you been doing while job searching? Now, in my mind, job searching is a full-time job, but that's not an acceptable answer, and you want to be learning, learning, learning. So the best thing to do in your gap time is to volunteer. And I'm not talking about handing out water at a 5K on a Sunday. (laughs) This is really call an organization who needs your skills. And no matter what skills you have, you can do something to help any local organization of your choice. It can be junior achievement. You can go teach kindergarten classes how to learn of financial literacy. If, If you just like business, they give you the script. That's one example. So, Please go out and be busy. You can also take classes. There's another good gap thing is, hey, I want to refine my Excel skills. I want to get up to an advanced level. So I've been taking a course at the local community college. Great. Uh, Those are all good things to do. And it makes you a more fulfilled candidate, especially while you're in a very frustrating mode, which is the job search. Let's pause for a moment uh, with talking specifically about the book, because in the last segment, I'd like to go into more detail a little bit about maybe chat section three, maybe. Um, But I wanted to just pick your brain for a minute because, you know, you worked at Kodak, correct? You were pretty high up at Kodak, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I was yeah. the vice president of worldwide marketing That's at Kodak in up. Rochester. That's, That's pretty high, high up. So, <laughs> so like for instance, like it sounds like what you've done, you've taken what your skill set is, and because at the end of the day, what you were doing at Kodak is what you're helping each individual do for themselves, which is to promote and market themselves, right? Absolutely. Okay. Even since Kodak, I've been in sales now for the last 12 years. I was general manager of worldwide sales for Microsoft for the last 11 years. Wow. Wow. Job searching is selling. Right. And and you don't have to know sales, but you need to you you need to know that you are the product mm-hmm. and they are the buyer. And once you learn those principles, you present yourself differently. You right. don't just dish out with your background and hope and pray. There's <laughs> right. a process to sales. Yeah. Therefore, you take your 10 prospects 
and you try to close and win one piece of business, which is your job. Exactly. And that's what I was getting to because, you know, and I don't know what the percentages are. I mean, if you are a, you know, a blacksmith, I mean, there's a specific, you know, thing that you're going to do. Or if you are a, a programmer, um, there is, you know, a specific type of job. But for those people that are out there that might be in business or they might be in marketing or in some other aspect of, uh, um, you know, a career or a skill set. I mean, don't limit yourself, I guess is what I'm saying to, you know, if you are good at marketing and you really love social networking and you really love how all of that is coming into the marketplace, you don't have to go work for Facebook. You know, you, right. there, each, each individual can make um, a company and put, put something of value to that company. So this is my example you know, for instance, I love the whole marketing and the social networking and interacting with our clients and, and building those um, those raving fans and all of that. Now, in Mortgage Investors Group, that's not what we do on a daily basis. However, that is exactly what I love to do. So, and when I when I went in for this particular job, that was my passion. That's what I love to do. That's what my skill set is. And it was a hard sell because they do mortgages. They don't do Twitter, you know? But so for people out there that love something, you know, that might be a way to differentiate yourself from another candidate, which is to go ahead, hey, look, here's some ideas that I have. Is that going too far? Or No, or, okay. that is exactly what I would, um, let's go back earlier. And, okay. I, and my one of my goal worksheets does this. Mm -hmm. We need to delink industry from what from function. Let's a function is the job. What's mm -hmm. the title you want on your nameplate or on your desk? It, what are you doing? Let's go back eight to five. And if you love content marketing or social media, they have that in need in every <laughs> industry. <laughs> Absolutely, you don't want to limit yourself to oh, I have to work in manufacturing industry or a high tech company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might be your number one preference, and you will search for those. But be flexible on the industry. I've moved industries. I worked for Sealand, a container company, <laughs> container shipping. I worked for Avery Label. All of that were marketing jobs, making a great career progression up and up and up. Wow. Yeah, that's such a good point. And, you know, Avery Label and um, then you go to, you know, Kodak and those different yeah. things. At the end of the day, you're doing you're doing what you believe in and it shines through significantly. Um, now. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that are along the same line of that, because I, I wanted to pause about the book, because, you know, understanding what you're doing and, and why you do what you do really helps, I think, people to become more interested in what you're what you're selling, because you're, you're selling a book, obviously, but you're also selling a set of principles that that can be applied to anything. And to go with that, the, the question I had for you on your website, you call yourself a career coach. Mm. Is that strictly through via the book or do you are you a attainable personally. I do have one-on-one -on -one clients around the country. Wow. I can do it over Skype wow. and I do, oh. I'm a one-on-one -on -one coach. And that's one of my passions. And I basically consider me your trainer. So I'm more than a coach. I am like Jillian Michaels for careers. And if you oh, want to see yes. results, oh. What I do is handhold you through every step, keep you accountable. We share technology where I, I can see what you're working on. I can give you input on every single job, what you should be doing. Did you follow up? So that's what I do for my clients. And I also love to public speak. So I go around the country mm -hmm. uh, to associations, to big conferences, and just give back. My goal is to reach millions and uh, with this message and, and help millions land quicker too. This is a speed game. It's money we're talking about. Yeah. Well, we're going to continue with you here in a moment once we come on the other side of this break, because I do want to close the, the, the interview out with a little bit more actionable steps that people can take, how they research it, how they can actually put these things into place in their lives, in their job search. Guys, this has been a great show so far. Come back and join us for the last segment. We're here talking about cutting the crap and getting a job. Come back with us right here on The Housing Hour. We'll be right back. It's getting near dawn When lights close the tired eyes I'll soon be with you, my Hey, everyone. This is Kevin Ray with The Housing Hour, and we want you guys to call Josh White at Home Harvest. Josh can build a vegetable garden in your backyard any size that you want. And that's what he does. He can help design a plan for you and your garden. Call Josh today at Home Harvest. And that's at 865-712-2745. Home Harvest, 865-712-2745. Hi, 
I'm Sue Benson, owner of Title Associates. In today's real estate market, it is more important than ever to have a title company with experience, a company you can trust, and one that conducts business with you in mind. If you're buying, selling, or refinancing, our staff promises to make your closing a pleasant one. If you're a real estate agent looking for excellent customer service, give us a call, 777-1040, or visit our website at tanox.com. Fall is a wonderful time in Tennessee. Temperatures begin to cool, leaves begin to turn, UT football. And truthfully, what's more fun than raking leaves with your family and letting your kids run through the piles? Mortgage Investors Group wants to help you make these precious memories come true for you. Whether it's a purchase or a refinance, we have the loan to fit your needs. So call us today, 1-800-489-8910, or visit us online at mortgageinvestorsgroup.com. Mortgage Investors Group. Your home loan solution for the past 23 years. Are you in the market to purchase a new home? Many first-time home buyers and veterans qualify for 2 or 4% down payment grants from the Tennessee Housing Development Agency. THDA offers 30-year fixed-rate mortgages insured by FHA, VA, USDA, or conventional loans. For more information, please visit our website at www.thda.org. Market realities in the housing market are making this a great time to buy. Home prices are right. Rates are rock bottom low. It's time to act. But you need a company primed to help you take advantage of the great opportunity. That company, Mortgage Investors Group. Refinancing. First, let's talk about that. What if you could take your 30-year mortgage and turn it into a 15? You could save hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mortgage Investors Group can get it done with payments close to your 30. That way, your house can be paid off before the kids finish high school. If you're a first-time home buyer, you're going to love Mortgage Investors Group. They have programs where you don't have to make a huge down payment, plus their information is accurate and reliable, and they get their deals done in 30 days or less. Best in the state for 10 years running. Go to their great new website, MIGonline.com, and find one of the 18 locations closest to you. The opportunities are real. The American dream is within reach. Let's get started. Mortgage Investors Group, your home loan solution for the past 23 years. Equal housing lender, mortgage license 109111. Another nice day on the way. For today, look for mostly sunny skies across East Tennessee, highs around 79. From the VLT Local 8 Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist David Aldrich. Obamacare, beyond politics. Every Thursday morning in October, we'll focus on the new health care law. Then tune in November 7th for a day devoted to answering your questions. Sponsored by Neiman Insurance Group. Obamacare, beyond politics. On News Talk 98.7 WOKI. The Housing Hour with Kevin Ray continues, helping you understand what is really going on out there and what to do about it. Again, Kevin Ray. Everybody get up. I'm just in here dancing. <laughs> Welcome back to the Housing Hour. This is Ke- Oh, is this mic on? Sorry. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for coming back in with us. And before we move on here and, and continue our conversation, uh, we do want to um, tell you all about a company that uh, Mark and I, Mortgage Investors Group, um, the Housing Hour certainly believe uh, very strongly in, and that is Admiral Title. Admiral Title been around for eight years. Uh, what they do is they're professional expert, and what they actually do is help you with the closing of your home loan. So in mortgage investors group is going to help take you all the way to the end. They're going to hand the baton off and you know, you've seen the Olympics. There are some people that will drop that baton and guess what? They're not running the next Olympics because they dropped the baton. They are great with taking the baton and running with it and scoring that touchdown or whatever you want to call it. And they just are good folks. They're good people. They know what they're doing real quick. Also, um, Terry Adams, which you all may have heard by now, has put his name in um, as a candidate for Senate. So mm-hmm. you can search that up a little bit, see if some of your uh, principles and um, things that you believe in align with his. And he's written a great book called uh, Do Quotient. Yep. And we need to put his um, interview up at some point. I have it up. Okay. We already I did have it. it. I, and I he actually did it again. Yes. Oops. He did it again. I did it. Like Brittany. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I went with that, but let's continue now with our conversation. Oh, yeah. Let me give them the phone number 865 531 6060. Admiral title. All right. Well, thanks for hanging through that, Dana. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> yes. And and you can also learn about Terry by just uh, Googling him, Terry Adams. And uh, he is running for Senate, uh, hopefully in 2014, I understand. Yeah. So, excited about that. He's looking for a new job, and that is in Washington. <laughs> yeah, so that's one way oh. to go for it. Oh, now, 
Mark, yeah. you know, one of the things that we see, I think, is we see a lot of people that are out there that are applying for jobs that honestly they just don't qualify for. Right. Um, before we move back in, Dana, how do you, um, I mean, I know you, if you're a one-on-one coach, you would be holding their hand, but then you'd probably be dragging them out of there because you don't need to apply for a job that you just don't align with. Right. It, yes. And there's a lot of desperation out there and I've been on the yeah. other side and I mm. know that, Oh no, what if, what if there aren't enough sales jobs for me? Then I better apply to this and to that. Well, the first, the way to check yourself on that is to take the job description that you're about to apply for, that you have no business applying for, Mm -hmm. and on the left-hand side of a table, just, or on a piece of, take a piece of paper, column A and column B, that's it, column A, just spell out what they're asking for in the job description. Don't try just reading it again and again, rewrite it on the left. Mm -hmm. On the right, fill in what you've done for each of those line items, so if they're looking for three to five years of engineering experience, what have you got on the column B? They're looking for experience in this, what have you got? And if you don't have 50% of what they're looking for, move on. Right. So 50%, that's a pretty... Stop and force yourself to read the frigging job description. (laughs) Exactly. Cut the crap. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's fantastic. Well, and and the the other thing, because I know that... You know, you talked about the desperation, and I don't want to make light of it, certainly. I mean, yeah. there are a lot of people that are out of a job, and, you know, the unemployment rate, I think, is at 7.2%. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, so there's a lot going on with that. We're seeing, you know, 100,000, a little more maybe every month, which on the surface may seem like a lot, but that's not even keeping up with the population growth. So, I mean, we have a problem, and I don't know the exact numbers, but if people were to find the employer that they're looking for, I mean, is there enough workforce to meet the jobs going forward? Um, or do we need really for companies to start hiring again? Because some people think, well, maybe it's just because there's not enough jobs out there. But a lot of it, honestly, is that there's not enough skilled workers potentially for the jobs that they're There's an article for. about that this yeah. later. Where mm-hmm. do you fall on that? You know, potentially there, there, are, there is a skill gap, a specific specifically in certain skills. However, mm-hmm. I also think that's an excuse, I'm, and I'll tell you why. Cut the crap. This is a matchmaking game. 80% of the jobs out there, a hiring manager is looking for you right now. Yeah, and exactly. the whole process is so broken. Why is a hiring manager getting resumes that have no business applying for candidates? And why are candidates not being able to find that hiring manager who's maybe right up the street? So I really put the onus back on the candidate to do much more work preparing, researching, and stop the random acts, right. but also to present yourself better. Mm. So going to, and, and you know what, I want to pause for a moment. Okay. We're not just talking to job seekers. This is for internal also. If you are employed, <sighs> mm. everybody Good wants point. to move forward. How do you get promoted? Mm. You need to interview. You need to apply. Get the party pictures internally. off Facebook, first of all. <laughs> but honestly, if I, mean, yeah. I, I hate to interrupt, but I mean, yeah. if you are looking to advance within your company, guess yeah. what? The people who are making those decisions are watching everything that you're doing because it's a reflection on them. Absolutely. If they were to promote you. So just a little tidbit. Yes. No, it, it, absolutely. So what's, in, what's new in the book, the, the most novel concept is a candidate packet. Never, ever, ever apply from today on when you hear this radio show with just a resume. You're uh-huh. doing yourself a disservice. And the candidate packet is all templated for you. Yeah. You can just copy mine. And what that does is present you with that column A and B that we just talked about to the hiring manager. Hit them between the eyes with why you're the best candidate for them. Make their job of hiring you easy. So would it be safe to say, and I know this is self-serving for you to say it, but you're very promotional on yourself. Uh, if they apply the techniques that you illustrate in this book, How far from the pack do they remove themselves and highlight themselves to a manager or hiring HR department? Would you say? Yeah, read some of the Amazon reviews. These are from complete strangers, so I am going to avoid promoting myself. These are from real people like you, like everybody who's listening, and they're getting the wow experience from the hiring manager. And one gentleman doesn't mention his company. He put XX, but he got in with a Fortune 100 company, and the the 
you'll read the quote of what the hiring manager said is you were the most prepared. You told me why you were the best candidate and he got the job and he got a, a promotion. He got a salary increase. Those stories I'm collecting every single week. Awesome. I wish I could guarantee, you know, if I could, I'd put, put the you know, money back guarantee behind it, <laughs> but it's, it's a, 1750 book, you know, so everyone should be investing in trying something new. If it's not my book, get someone else's, reboot your process and see the results. But I know my system works because I've been uh, using the system, coaching others for over 15 years in a, throughout my Microsoft career, my Kodak career, and it just works. Have you written a book or you think about writing a book called Cut the Crap, Hire the Right Person? <laughs> for hiring managers. Yeah, for, I, I need you know, this I, book. I just posted an article. I will. I write for the business journals all nationwide in a column called Career Mojo, and I just wrote an, a long article on that. But my next book is uh, already started. It's Cut the Crap Network for Success. <laughs> and regardless mm. if it's for job search or for, for finding clients, it's all the network process end to end. So you'll so come back on the show. Of Cut the Crap books. So you'll come back on the show and talk about that. Yeah. Well, I'm coming back on because I think we need to talk more about those who are employed and how they get themselves unstuck. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's true too. Uh, I, and just so everybody knows, I was kind of thumbing through the the reviews. There's dozens on here of reviews of this book, and they're not like little short reviews. They're really meaty reviews. Interesting. Where, where before you spend the money to buy the book, I mean, read the reviews. It has a four star. Um, which, you know, that's one thing about Amazon that I love is that mm-hmm. they do allow for these reviews to be seen in their good reviews here, folks. Um, I would highly recommend going and just taking a look at those. Um, I'll really those too. Please do. Yeah, that would be good. Now, yeah, you talked about getting out of the rut because a lot of us who, uh, not us, man, I'm pretty happy, but I mean, you know, everybody is looking. I mean, what? that's the whole point. If you said, well, I just want to be, I just want to be a, um, I just want to be a ticket taker at uh, KFC for the rest of my life. You know, that's just all I want to do. Well, I mean, if that's truly what makes you happy and that's what satisfies you and that's what you're passionate about is taking orders, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. There's nothing wrong with being the janitor at Woodland Elementary School or being the librarian at um, Willowbrook Elementary School. Whatever it is that you want to do, that's great. But if you are in a rut, meaning you're dissatisfied, you're not feeling good about what you're doing and the results are that it's uh, bleeding into your personal life, you could really take what what Dana's talking about and really put it into practice. Right, Dana? Yeah. The recent Gallup poll showed that 70% of employees are disengaged from their jobs today. Wow. Very scary number, huge drop from 50% just five years ago. So, and the, and the onus is on if you, and so again, it's easy to sit here and say, stop whining and go do something. No, it's put a process in place that gets you into a new job. It could be a different function if you want to make a career change within your company. It could be a promotion in another division or within your division. But there are ways to go about doing that. But the onus and the the accountability needs to be on you. Don't blame it on the company and on your manager and they're not doing it for you. Do it yourself. You can go get that done because the, the next guy who, and woman who's getting that promotion, they did something differently. And Landon, you, could you cut that piece out for me and, <laughs> and email it to me? Because I got some people to send that to. <laughs> so what, what you're describing, is that the whole book or are you, is this a different piece of the book? There's more. I'd be happy to come back on and we can spend time on how to get promoted. Um, no, it's not elaborated in this book. See, that's it's fascinating on some of my blog, But I have mm. the know-how and the process oh, yeah. on how to get promoted. I We're talking to the, I mean, you're the steps. VP. You were the VP of, I mean, Kodak. You know how to get the job done. And Microsoft. I mean, she yeah. has amazing and I've this seen is others it. move forward and how they've done it and other people fail um, who really whined about it and didn't try very hard. Well, just I need to clarify something. It's actually a five star um, book. The reviews because five star. There's five. Okay. There's I'm out of five. Let you go on that. <laughs> well, and and the reviews are that's how Amazon works. It's up to five stars, and she does have five stars. And matter of fact, ninety one percent of all of the reviews are five stars. Just wanted to clarify that. So yeah, she, she's going to reach through the microphone and say, cut the crap. Give me the right rating. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. So we want to get that straight. Um, well, you know, 
I think that there's a lot that we left out because, because you have to get the book for part of it, but yeah. there's a lot in, in that last segment that talks about the interview process and all of those things. Yeah. And, and Dana, talk to us about phone etiquette. You mentioned phone etiquette, email etiquette. What are you talking about? Mm. I do. I am talking about one word formality. Mm. Uh, for some reason with social media, and this is not blaming the millennials, this is at all generations, the the bar is so low on emails that I'm <laughs> receiving as a hiring manager, phones, uh, phone interviews. Everyone needs to pretend you're talking with an email or phone with President Obama or pick any exactly, other important exactly. figure and raise the bar. Stop the highest, the DTHX for thanks. Anything that you, you're trying to be, they, they don't want to be your buddy. Folks, this is a very important job process. This is a business process. So dress formally, talk formally, email formally, and be on the phone in a quiet place where this is an important call for you when you're doing a phone interview or a phone screen. And I can tell when people email me about a job or uh, especially email, I can tell that they're an older person who has maturity. Mm-hmm. Or, I they can't. Don't, or they I don't can't. have spell check. I can't because it, it's so formal. It's so professionally written. And the younger ones uh, are using abbreviations that they use on text. That's right. They're, they're emailing with their thumbs. Right. Now, and, and, it's, but it's, and it shows up in all different ways. And let me tell you my number one bugaboo, I'll switch a little bit, is tardiness. So this is up there with etiquette. But isn't it a shame that we're still, here we are in this day and age, people are late for their phone interviews, candidates late for their job interviews, sloppily dressed. This is all part of the, it's a, it's a performance. Mm. So I really want everyone to, rule number one, if you're not in the lobby 30 minutes early, you're late. Wow. And scope out the location, the exact building, the entrance to the reception area the day before or the week before. That's Brilliant. part of preparation, but it's part of winning a job. Maybe the emergency exit if you don't like the manager that you're <laughs> talking to. No. Well, I tell you, we have had a great time today, and um, we certainly appreciate you giving us this time as well. Unfortunately, the time has come to a close, so we'll have to pick it back up next time whenever you and I get together again. This has been great, Mark. Thanks for getting this. Absolutely, interview. Dana. Thank you very much. Yeah. The name I loved of the it. book. Your, your listeners can email me with any other questions and challenges they have. And I hope I'm back. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Absolutely, you will be. Go on to our website, thehousinghour.com, or you can go to Amazon. It's Cut the Crap, Get a Job. We appreciate Dana for coming in today. We thank you guys for coming in and listening with us. We'll see you next week right here on The Housing Hour. That's the Housing Hour with Kevin Ray for today. Join Kevin and his guests each week at this time to keep up with the why and the why not. You need to know, so come here to find out. This program is presented by Mortgage Investors Group.